let's disconnect this and plug this back in here and then plug that into our output. So this is our black and white mask. We're gonna render this one out first. Navigate to your image sequence. And now we have our mask that's added in here. This video is a part of a series, and if you want to check out the whole series, head on over to my new website, BlenderFrenzy.com, where you can access lots of free and members-only content, including extra tutorials, downloads, assets, blend files, Q&A live streams, and much more. Signing up helps support me, which in turn gives you more Blender content, so head on over to BlenderFrenzy.com and become a member today. Okay, now we're ready to uh, render out here, so save. And in our viewport, let's uh, select our camera, and go to viewport display. I'm gonna turn that pass part two up, or however you say that. And then let's come over here and turn this to rendered. And uh, we wanna disable our overlays. We also need to come up to our render properties. And under film, we need to check transparent. Okay, so now at the beginning, we have something that looks like this. And then let's just go in the middle here to make sure it matches. Something that looks like this. Okay, cool. So what we wanna do, we don't actually want to render that concrete texture. The first thing I wanna do is render the black and white mask. So let's go back over to our layout and we're just gonna plug that one in for now. Uh, which is gonna be just, uh, we could just, let's disconnect this and plug this back in here and then plug that into our output. So this is our black and white mask. We're gonna render this one out first. So let's press F12 and this is what we should have. And I'm just gonna go and make sure that this preview window matches our render results. Make sure you have your render results selected here. And again, this is the 3D preview with our rendered preview mode. So they look like they match. I'm just gonna make sure we uh, check a couple more frames here. And then we need to make sure we get the proper frame range. So uh, we actually don't wanna make any frames that don't have information. So all the way at the beginning, this is completely white. That's not any information. It's just gonna be showing whatever image or video we have already. So if we come and just arrow through, I'm just arrowing through until I start seeing um, some black coming through. So we're gonna start at, at nine. We can start at 10 too, let's just start at 10. It doesn't matter that much because that's a very small change. Okay, so I'm just going to make my start frame 10. And then, let's see, we need to select our, oh, that is selected. Oh, there it is, okay. And then we need to go to the end and find when it's fully black right there. Uh, so we're gonna end it here at 54. And that's just so we have no um, information. Actually, I might go to, you know, we might get away with just doing 50. Let's do that. Cause then it will be 50 and then we'll just jump there. Nobody will notice that. Okay, so now we are ready to render this out. So let's go to our settings, our output settings. 1920 by 1080 is okay. I'm gonna keep all that the same. Just do double forward slash here, enter. That is double forward slash is the current folder of the blend file that I'm gonna open. And I'm gonna add in another folder, imsq underscore fire burn fire 01, like that. And then we go in here and then I'm gonna name this the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy this here with a trailing underscore to separate the frame numbers that will be automatically added. Keep file extensions checked here. Uh, PNG, we want PNG or anything with alpha. So RGBA, the A is for alpha. That is your transparency. Okay, Justin from the future here, and I'm gonna correct something that I just said. Um, when rendering out a black and white image, you actually don't need to use PNG and alpha. And there's some confusion about this. I got a comment recently asking um, or saying that they, when they were rendering out an image or a mask, that it was better to use the PNG RGBA. And that is true, but not with black and white images. So a black and white image doesn't contain in itself transparency. With a black and white image, all you would need to do is go to JPEG, 
and then black and white. And then you're going to save a lot of space because it's not going to have as much information as maybe an RGBA image would. So for just strictly masks and black and white images like this, I just try to do black and white JPEGs. Where you would want to actually use PNG and with the alpha, that A is that alpha, if we go back to our layout and then just plug in our fire strip here, you can see this gray checkerboard texture in the background. That represents transparency whenever you see that. So this would be if we would want to put, and let's go back to the rendering, you can see everything behind it is not black, it's just transparent, it's invisible. So you would just have this fire strip as an overlay on any other footage. So if you were actually rendering this out, and if we press F12 to render that, if you were rendering this as an image overlay, you would definitely want to use this. Otherwise, it's going to be this fire on a black background. In fact, if we go back to our layout, uh, the reason we have this transparency background is because our blend mode is alpha blend. If we change this to opaque, you will have that black background. And in this instance, you would be able to just render out a JPEG because there's no transparency information here. So then that begs the question, how do black and white masks then produce transparency? Well, that comes later. So in the black and white image mask itself, there's no transparency information. So uh, let's actually plug this one back in here and re-render that. So here we would pull this information into the video sequence editor, which we will do in the next video. And then we'll tell the video sequence editor, okay, everywhere you see black, then we're gonna change that to transparency. And everywhere you see white, it's gonna be fully opaque. So it's actually using the non-transparent mask to then produce transparency, but the image itself here doesn't have any transparency, so you don't have to use PNG with RGBA here. So I hope that makes sense, and I hope that clears up a little bit of confusion regarding PNGs, alphas, and JPEGs when it comes to masks and transparency. And I'm gonna uncheck overwrite for now, and post-processing, uncheck both of these, because we're not using any of those right now. If you were, those would take precedence. So if you had something in the sequencer and you had those checked, you wouldn't actually be seeing your render. So just make sure those are unchecked if you're rendering something from the, the 3D preview and you don't have anything to add to it like compositing. Okay, we are ready to render. Save it and F Control F12 is render and this is gonna render all of that out. Uh, you can also come up to here to render and then render animation. See it there. Okay, and I'm just going to name this texture and create a new scene, copy settings, and save VSE here, and then scroll over, click this button, video editing, video editing, collapse this here. Hover over here, press home, and scroll out a bit. I'm going to go to the beginning. We're going to add in a color texture. I mean a color strip. And then uh, just make this uh, some, some color here. Purple is fine. I'm going to duplicate that up. And we're going to change the hue. Just change that to... Well, actually, I'll, just, I'll change the whole color. So this is kind of a darker blue here, like that. And then we're going to add in our image sequence. Navigate to your image sequence that you just created. Make sure it's counting up from the first frame that we had, which is 10. Add image strip, and now we have our mask that's added in here. Awesome, so then we take these, we just grab those and snap those here by pressing Control so that everything is the same size. And we're gonna select our color, and we're gonna use the mask on our top color. So go to Modifiers, Add Strip Modifier, Mask, and under mask, we can choose the fire burn and nothing has happened or we haven't seen anything happen because we need to take this and hide it. And now, even though the mask is hidden, it's still being used by the blue color. And you can see this being burned away without our fire yet. We still have to render our fire out, but uh, this is a good start. I'm gonna press control T so we can see our frames. I'm gonna stay on frame 30. Uh, because I'm going to show you what happens with our fire when we render it out. 